So this video is probably going to be short. It's going to be like um, a couple like points that I want to make. And then um, there's way more detail and connection to make. So I... How do I say this? Because I don't, again, don't want to be offensive. Even though the other day I did share a video about... This kind of feeling like... Okay. I don't like when Christians tell non-Christians that they're lost or that there's something inherently wrong with them. It bothers me because I think it's a lie. And um, it's a lie that you tell people to get them to believe the truth of salvation that you're going to give to them, which in my opinion is also a lie. So, um, I watch a lot of cult documentaries. I'm fascinated by it. Um, and I've heard other people who have left, um, and we're not just talking about like religious circles that pray, you know, at home and um, faith is a part of their life, but it's not like the central part of their life. Um, it's more of a traditional thing and they believe in God. I mean, we're talking about lifestyles that everything is focused and based around the center of faith and religion. Um, I was raised Pentecostal, which was, um, well, it was a very emotional faith. Um, anyway, I was, I am a charismatic person. I'm a passionate person. So it was kind of like the perfect faith to indoctrinate me for because, um, I'm a zealous person. Um, which made me very evangelical, um, naturally. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about some of the cult things I've been watching because they always remind me, and back in the day they didn't remind me <laughs> when I used to watch them when I was a Christian, but now that I've left faith, I can see so many elements of um, of cults in Christianity. First of all, you have to be broken. You have to be told you're worthless without it. And um, I remember kind of the beginning of my awakening teaching youth. Um, I'm calling it my awakening. I don't know. I don't have words for this shit, to be honest with you. I just really don't. It was the beginning of me kind of like bucking that belief that there was something wrong with me all the time. Um, I shared a message with the youth that wasn't actually, we were going through a youth pastor change and I was part of leadership at the time and I was really just trying to keep everybody connected and things weren't going well. And I remember it was my week to teach, and I taught a message called, I Believe in You. And it was about my faith in the kids, and um, how much, how many dreams and hopes I had for them. And sincerely didn't really have anything to do with God. And every once in a while, I would teach something like that. And I started to notice that the things that... I believed weren't always in line with that I'm a broken person that needs salvation. And a lot of it was probably because I was indoctrinated from toddler age. Um, so I didn't have a salvation story. I just didn't. It I, my salvation story was that I was protected from the world and I always got to know God. So I always had a connection to him that other people 
didn't get to experience. So my salvation story was that I didn't have a turning point of salvation, that I just always was with God, um, which made me feel unique and beautiful and um, powerful. It made me, I'm sorry, this was supposed to be short, uh, but it made me feel like I had a very unique um, plan that God had a plan for me that was special, that he preserved me um, while other people had really awesome, I mean, it didn't feel like that mine was more special than anybody else's, but it felt like that was my story and that's what made my salvation special to me. I'm not one of those people that requires uniqueness or to be an individual in a group of people. I don't fucking care. I don't care if I looked exactly like my neighbor. Like, it really doesn't bother me. I don't need individualism like that. Um, In fact, I really appreciate similarities in people. (laughs) Our differences make us beautiful, but they also make me uncomfortable sometimes, and I prefer similarities, (laughs) if I'm being completely honest. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just personality shit. So um, I'm watching The Vow on um, HBO right now. And I have already watched, it's called, I don't know how to say it, Nexium, I think they say it. But it's N-X-I-V-M. And I, that's the name of the cult. Um, I have already seen a short documentary about that when I was watching Scientology documentary and then um there's like a cult show I think it's on Hulu and um I don't know the original network and um they have like multiple cults in there and NX was one of them. So I already had the backdrop for this. Um, I already knew how it was going to end essentially, but there's so much more detail in the vow. Um, and really, really breaks it down from the inside out, just like, uh, Scientology one does. They're very similar things too, which is crazy. Um, same kind of concepts, about, like, um, facts and intellect and it not being, you know, like, controlling your emotions and stuff, um, because religion, especially, like, Pentecostalism is, like, emotionalism and stuff, so they control your emotions by being emotional (laughs) and preying on it, and then in this cult, NX, IVM, they they teach you how to control your emotions and emotional reactions are essentially like weakness if you're not able to actually control them so they essentially are teaching you to turn off like your gut instincts um which I found to be fascinating because in Christianity I'm trying I was trying to turn on my intuition but it had a name and that that was God, the Holy Spirit. So it's just a very, um, different approaches to, uh, control. But the main point or the similarity for me is that you have to believe that you need something from this system, right? Because one thing that is really important to me as a 35-year-old woman who left Christianity over what was about seven or eight years of unindoctrination, you know, undoing indoctrination for myself, um, is not being, not being duped again, not replacing one belief system with another. Um, I've been studying astrology because I'm very interested in the energy of the planets. I mean, the moon affects, you know, our tides and stuff. It, um, seems to have an effect on our cycles as women. And I just have found it intriguing, but I just cannot say that it is a belief system for me. I'm still in the process of like picking it apart and, um, 
I just, I uh, claim atheism, that I am an atheist at this point. Um, I felt like I needed to define myself and I, I, I'm at a point where I'm not agnostic, where I'm thinking, oh, there could be a God. I'm like, there just isn't a God. Like, I need to just, like, sit with that and, like, be with that and be okay with that because I just don't feel like there is a God. And I want to... I want to let myself be a, like be bold enough to say that even if I find it to not be true at some point I wanted to be able to let go of the fear that says I can't say it that condemnation and hell and and things will be brought on me if if I go to the place where I can actually say I God does not exist. And I need to be able to say that for myself at this point in my life. And I am. And it feels amazing. It feels free. Um, That's where I am with it. Because, again, I'm afraid to replace one system with another. Um, One thing in the cult, this cult that the leadership, you know, 12 years of investment of bringing people in, to the faith and stuff that they realized, not the faith, into the group, into the company, um, because theirs was set up very different. Um, It was that it was so hard for them to believe that really bad things were going on behind the scenes and that they were being manipulated and that, you know, people were holding very dark secrets and, um, because if they believed that after all of their investment, what was real then? Because they weren't just like buying this as something that was sold. They believed it with all of their heart. The people who were manipulated were manipulating other people and not even realizing that they were. And I relate because that's what happened to me in faith. I was so eager to save people, to give them this gift of salvation that I had without even actually having a salvation story myself. Um, I wanted them to know the joy that I know. And now that I'm out of it, I want them to know that there is more joy outside of faith. That there is not having a system to undo... Yeah, we're almost at Aunt Tammy's house, honey. Not having a system to undo or to plug everything into is very freeing. No, I don't have answers. I don't have the answers for life. And I don't think I'm supposed to. And I'm totally okay with that. Um, But some of the men, that was the thing that they were stating as they were making the decision to leave um, an ex-IVM. It was, I have invested so much. And if I walk away from this all of the things that I believe to be true aren't true even though they seemed even though they worked for me so what the fuck am I going to do when everything that I've believed now is a lie because what is the truth and so that's a part when you go through indoctrination from a cult or even just Christian faith that you're like oh my God, I've got nothing now. I had everything. I had all of the answers. And NXIVM, you, he, that dude is a master manipulator of, of people. And um, he's really able to understand people and get into their psyches. And he was teaching his followers, essentially, the people in the company, how to be able to do that. And so they are not even realizing that they're manipulating so hard are learning these tools and tactics for themselves that have already been done to them. And um, when you're manipulated like that, you don't know. (laughs) You don't know. Even when you're doing it yourself, 
you've already turned off all of your intuition. You've shut down all of the red flags um, because you've been told you need this. Kind of like faith that you'll go to hell without it. Whenever there's that fear put into place, that coercion of fear, danger, 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 danger. And if you're ever, I don't know, I just, I'm sorry. Um, it's been a very, very good documentary. And I feel um, just like all of the cult documentaries that I watch, um, I just want to protect people. I'm at a point in my life where I want to warn people. I I want them to understand the danger and the damage. And I don't know that um, that I have all of that clear yet. <laughs> I just know that I'm free now and it feels amazing and um, I'm going to raise my children free and that feels amazing. Um, The more though, I do see very negative things but I'm not going to get into that. Eventually I will. I will pinpoint, specify, and share um, all of the things that I think are harmful about religion. But for now, I'm going to leave it at just the correlations and connections that I've made watching this last um, documentary series that I'm still in the middle of. So, yeah. Um, If you followed me this long, I'm sorry. Um, But, I don't know. I want to give answers to the things that I have had questions to. And, God, I'm going to share my fucking story. I'm going to share it so goddamn loud. I will. I have to. It's like when you realize you're responsible for people struggling with fear of hell and fear in general, and you had a part in that, you just want to undo it. You want to fix it. You want to actually save people by freeing them from a system that you linked them into. That's bullshit. That's where I am right now.